Blinded eyes, burning hearts, bruised hands. That's the scope of our message for today. Blinded eyes, burning hearts, wounded hands. Listen to these words from the book of Luke. Chapter number 24 and verse number 13. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. It is A.D. 33 in the city of Jerusalem. We call it Easter Sunday. And the city of Jerusalem was in a turmoil. Jesus Christ had been crucified that Friday. And then early Sunday morning, they had went to the tomb. They couldn't find the body. They knew that they had buried him in a small cave and they had rolled a stone to the mouth of the cave and, and now he's missing. Mary and Mary Magdalene came to the tomb that day and the tomb was empty. Peter and John also went in and the Bible says that they only saw the clothing of Jesus. And now the whole city of Jerusalem, as well as Judea and all of Palestine, is humming with the news that the body of Jesus had been stolen, and they don't know where he is. And so our text deal with two disciples who, who left Jerusalem that particular morning, and they were going back home. After all of the news, uh, they left Jerusalem, and they were going back to Emmaus. Emmaus is about seven miles west of Jerusalem, and as they were going, the Bible said that suddenly Jesus shows up out of nowhere. Jesus. And he began to talk with them as they walked on their way to home. Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. Now remember now that uh, the tomb was empty. They went to the tomb. James, uh, John and Peter and then Mary and Meg Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and it was empty. And now Jesus shows up walking with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Blinded eyes, burning hearts, bruised hands. Let's talk about the blinded eyes. The Bible says that as these two disciples were going and walking to Emmaus, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, suddenly shows up out of nowhere. And the Bible says this, if you read the text, the Bible says in verse number 16, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. In other words, their eyes were figuratively blinded 
that they did not recognize Jesus. I raise the question right now. I raise the question, why couldn't they not recognize Jesus? This was the Jesus that they had been with for three years. Same Jesus they had walked with and the same Jesus that they had talked with. And now they could not recognize Jesus. They could not recognize him because they were blinded figuratively, not physically, but they were figuratively blinded. And when we can't understand and we don't recognize something, we say they are or you are blind. They did not recognize Jesus because their eyes were blinded and because they did not expect Jesus to be raised from the dead. And that's why Jesus called them, he called them foolish. He called them foolish and slow to believe. They didn't believe that Jesus was Going to be erected or resurrected. None of the disciples believed it. A matter of fact, the Bible says all of the apostles, they went back fishing. They didn't believe. And here Jesus shows up incognito. Can I remind you, as we look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, many times the Lord God would show up incognito. Many times throughout the Bible, God, the almighty God, would show up incognito. Do you remember Moses? Moses was out tending the sheep one day, and the Bible says that God showed up in a burning bush. He showed up incognito. And do you remember Jacob? The Bible says that Jacob one night went to sleep and he wrestled with a man all night long. He wrestled with a man all night long. And early that morning, he recognized that it was God. It was God incognito. I tell you, God. The Lord can show up sometimes incognito. He will show up in disguise sometimes. I want to tell you today, my brothers and sisters, even today, Jesus shows up incognito. Jesus shows up and many times we do not recognize Jesus. Oh, my brothers and sisters, can you hear me today? Can you hear me today? When there are needy persons, and every time you see a needy person, that is Jesus. Every time, every time, every time you see a hungry person, that's Jesus. Every time you see a sick person in the hospital and in the nursing home, that's Jesus. Every time you see an individual that's naked and need clothing, that's Jesus. And Jesus said these words in Matthew chapter 25. Jesus says, I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no water. He said, I, I, was, I was sick and in prison and you didn't come to visit me. And when you see, when you see a hungry person, Jesus said, that's me. I, I'm incognito. When you see a person that's hungry, when you see a person that needy, that's Jesus incognito. When you, when you hear of a person that's sick, that's Jesus incognito. My brothers and sisters, we sometimes pass over and we don't recognize that it's Jesus. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I say it again. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for, 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 for looking at hungry and passing him by. For looking at Jesus who is hungry and you're passing by. For look at Jesus and he's sick and you won't visit. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You sing that song. I keep falling in love with him. You keep singing that song, I love him, I really love him, and uh, you don't know how I really love him. You don't know what he's done for me. He's gave me the victory. You sing that song, and yet you pass Jesus by because he's incognito. Oh, yes, my brothers and sisters, 
Jesus can be incognito. And sometimes we don't recognize how good Jesus is. Let me say it again. Sometimes we don't recognize the goodness of Jesus. The Bible said these words, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Jesus, oh, was a good man. Can I tell you that? Never saw a hungry mouth that he didn't feed. Never saw a sick person that he didn't heal. Never saw a needy person that he didn't help. Everywhere, everywhere that Jesus went, he was always healing someone. He was always feeding someone. He was always teaching someone. Jesus, look how good he is. Even hanging on the cross, look how good Jesus is. Hanging on the cross, he said, he looked up to his father and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He forgave the, the people that were crucifying him. Oh, the love of Jesus. Oh, he's good today. You ought to taste him. Taste how good he is. Tastes better than apple pie and ice cream. He tastes better than turnip greens and cornbread. He tastes good than macaroni and cheese. Oh, taste the Lord and see that he is good, the Bible says. Yes, he's so good that he will forgive you every time you come. You need forgiveness. Oh, the Lord is so good, he will forgive you. Doesn't matter how bad it was, Jesus will forgive you. Doesn't matter how many times you sin, Jesus will forgive you. That's how good Jesus is. The Bible says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Jesus is good, and sometimes we don't see the goodness of God. But let me tell you this. These two disciples. As they are traveling back to their home in Emmaus. And now Jesus joins them. And they began, began talking with them. And they began talking about what happened in Jerusalem. The headline news. And the Bible says that. When they got to the home of these two disciples, the Bible says that these two disciples invited Jesus into their home. Uh, can I drop a message to you today? Would you invite Jesus into your home? Uh, can I ask you today, would, would you invite Jesus into your apartment? Would you invite Jesus into your home? I want to ask the question what would Jesus find if he came to your house? I will bet you that if Jesus came to stay with you just a day or two, you would change some things in your house. Oh, yes, you would. You would change the way you talk. Some of us would change the way we dress. If Jesus came to our house, I will bet you if Jesus came and stayed a, a week or two with you, you would go to church every Sunday morning. You would go to Bible class every Wednesday. I will bet if Jesus came to stay with you, you would read your Bible every day. You would try to impress the Lord by reading your Bible every day if Jesus came to live with you. Jesus came to your house. I would bet that some of us would clean out our refrigerator. Lord, help us today. Clean out our refrigerator. Throw away all the beer and the wine because Jesus is in the house. We're trying to impress Jesus. If Jesus came to your house, what would you do? Is the question today. Oh, yes. We change some TV programs. We we'll change our internet uh, search. We we'll change our Facebook. We would change some things about our social media. We would change some things if Jesus came by. And yes, the Bible says when they went in the house, the Bible says that they fixed Jesus a dinner. Guess who's coming to dinner? Jesus is coming to dinner. The Bible says they ate that day in the house. 
And the Bible says, and they ate, and they ate, and the Bible says this, that, that suddenly after they ate, Jesus vanished away. Gone. Well, I need to talk to you about the burning hearts. When you walk with Jesus, he'll give you the heartburns. That's what I said. Jesus will give you the heartburns. This is what the Bible said. These men said. Did we not know him when we walked with him on the way? And did not our hearts burn within us? Didn't our hearts burn within us as we walked with him along the way? That's what they said. Jesus, if you walk with Jesus, he will give you heartburn. There are some people that are so warm. There are some people that are so loving and so kind that, that when you get close to them, your, your heart will be aflame. You will, you will feel the warmth from them. Your heart will be aflame. You will get heartburned. And so it was with Jesus. So it was with Jesus. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, oh, yes, Jesus had his critics and Jesus had his haters. But everywhere Jesus, when people loved him, that's the kind of man he was. Everywhere, everywhere he went, crowds would gather just to see Jesus. Oh, the little children loved him. You remember one day in Matthew chapter 18, he held a little child in his hand and he, as he preached and as he gave a demonstration, he had, he held a little child in his hand. Even the little children loved Jesus. And I'll tell you something else. The women loved Jesus because Jesus was kind to women. Jesus loved women. He was kind and he spoke kind to women. I will tell you this, my brothers and sisters. The Jewish men, they would not be caught in public talking with a woman. But oh, Jesus did that. You remember the woman at the well? The disciples went by to get some food. And when they came back to the well, the Bible said that, that Jesus was talking to the woman at the well. A woman that had five husbands and she was shocking up with a sixth husband. And Jesus was kind and talking to her. He did not call her a husband. He did not tell her she was going to hell. Jesus was loving and kind to her. Do you remember the woman? came to Jesus one day. She broke into the house where they were eating and the Bible says uh, she washed his feet uh, with her tears and dried his feet with her hair and she anointed him and anointing him and she loved Jesus and Jesus loved her. Yes, do you remember the woman that was caught in adultery? Jesus was kind to her. No, Jesus didn't call her a prostitute. Jesus didn't call her a hussy. Jesus was kind to her. And just Jesus says, go and sin no more. I tell you, people love Jesus. And I got to raise a question today. Do you love him? I, I said, do you love him? I, I can hear someone say, Brother Gray, I, I come to church every Sunday morning. That's not the question. I ask you, did you love him? Someone else say, I come to Bible class. I go to Bible class and I go to church every week. That's not the question. The question is, do you love him? And someone said, I work in the church. I serve the church. I, 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 I teach a class. I, I pray. I, I serve in the communion. I, I drive the bus. That's not the question. The question is, do you really love him? And that's the question that he asked Peter in John chapter number 20. Do you remember? Peter, do you love me? I want to ask you, my brothers and sisters today, do you really love the Lord? That's the question that's on the table today. Do you really love him? And someone asked the question, then how do I know I love him? Well, Jesus said these words. 
If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll do what I say do. If you love me, you will obey my word. If you love me, if you love me, you'll love your enemies. If you love me, you'll love me more than you love your mother and your father, your sister and your brother, your children, your husband, your wife. You will love me even more than you love yourself. You will love me more than you love your money. Do you love me is a question that Jesus is asking all of us. Jesus is asking the question to you today. Do you really love me? Do you really love me? And then Jesus asked these men as they were walking. That day, why are you so sad? Evidently, they were thinking about and they were talking about the crucifixion of Jesus, how they beat him and how they killed him and crucified him. And they had a sad face. And Jesus said, as you walk with him, why are you sad? Why are you sad? What Jesus was saying, this is not a funeral, but this is a banquet. I'm not dead, I'm alive. This is not a funeral, this is a banquet. Turn your, turn your mourning into shouting. Turn your, 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 your sadness into joy. Turn your tears into cheers. Someone said these words, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears is gone. And I know, I know who holds the future. Oh, because he lives. Oh, yes, because he lives. Oh, yes, why are you sad? I, I want to ask you today, why are you sad? And someone would say, Brother Gray, look at my finances. That's why I'm sad. And someone else would say, look at my body. That's why I'm sad. This old body got so many things wrong with it, Brother Gray. And that's why I'm sad. Everything that's up is down and everything that down is up. High blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, low iron, low potassium. Everything that's up is down and everything that's down is up. Someone would say, look at my body. Where there are hills, there are hills that should be mountains and mountains that should be hills. Somebody said, that's why I'm sad. So what? Jesus said, I'll give you another body. Why are you sad? Why are you sad is the question I raised today. And these disciples were walking and they were sad. But I want to remind you. The burning heart will stimulate an open mouth. Let me say it again. The burning heart will stimulate an open mouth. This is what the Bible says. Oh, when these disciples, when their heart burned as they walked with Jesus, and when they suddenly realized it was Jesus in the house, they began to talk and they began to say these words, did not our heart burn while we walked with him? And the Bible said that same hour they got up and they walked back to Jerusalem and they began to tell all of their friends and all of their neighbors about Jesus. I will tell you again, a burning heart will stimulate an open mind. There is a nerve that runs from the heart all the way to the tongue. And when you have been burned by Jesus, when your heart is burned, you can't help but talk about Jesus. Do you hear me today? Do you hear me today? Oh, yes. Then I want to talk to you today about the bruised hands. Bible says when these guys got home and Jesus was invited and Jesus came into their house and they began to eat. And the Bible says this, that Jesus began to break bread. Look at him now. Jesus blessed the bread and Jesus broke the bread and the disciples noticed something about the hands of Jesus. Notice something about how he broke the bread. They noticed something about how he blessed the bread. And they noticed something about Jesus. And the writer Luke 
leave some things to our imagination. Perhaps they notice, they notice, they notice the nail prints in his hands. They notice a nail prints in his hand. And then a light came on. The Bible says their eyes were open and they knew that it was Jesus. And then Jesus vanished out of their sight. When they saw the bruised hands, the bruised hand, the crucified hand, they, the light came on. And I need to ask you today, look at your hands today. Are your hands bruised? Have your hands, do you have nail prints in your hands? Paul said it like this. I am crucified with Christ. Have you been crucified with Christ? He said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not I, but Christ that lives in me. Paul is saying, Paul has been crucified. That old Paul, that old sinful Paul has been crucified. I got to ask you the question today. That old self, that old self, that old bad self, has it been crucified? You crucified the old self. Then Paul said these words, nevertheless I live. But it's not me that's living, it's Christ living in me. I got to ask you the question, does Christ live in you? Have you, have you crucified the old man? Christ will not live in you until you crucify the old person. Yes, my brothers and sisters, your bruised hand. Look at your hands today. Oh, they bruised. And the Bible says, as we go on, Jesus accepted the invitation and came into the house. That's like Jesus. That's just like Jesus. He'll accept your invitation. If you want him to come into your life, Jesus will accept the invitation. Oh, would you invite him into your house today? Would you invite him into your home today? Would you invite him into your house today? And Jesus said, one day, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. If you open up the door. Jesus says, if you open up the door, if you open up the door, someone is knocking at your door. And it knocks like Jesus. Somebody is knocking at your door. It knocks like Jesus. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? Will you open the door? And Jesus says, if you open the door. Oh, if you open the door. Jesus said, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. If you open the door, I'll come in and we'll have a dinner party. I'll bring joy and happiness into your life. You got to open the door. I'll bring peace and happiness in your life. If you open the door, will you open the door today? Jesus wants to come in. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Will you open the door? 